Welcome to my channel. We're at Illigan Beach today and we're having a nice time walking barefoot in the sand. Today we want to vlog a very special friend of mine. We're going to do a childhood memory. I don't do that every day. And a racer, a friend who I raced Speedway with and he got me involved in motorcycle racing. We're going to talk about him right now. His name is Paul Blyle. Sadly, Paul passed away October 27, 2017. But we're going to honor and we're going to remember Paul today. So get ready. We're going to start right now. I first noticed Paul at the OCIR, the Orange County International Raceway. Do you know where that's at? I do. It's in Irvine, California, and Paul was racing the TT motorcycle races. I was about 14 or 15 at the time, very young punk. I was sitting in the stands and they said, and in this race, Paul the Lion. And I said, I know that guy. He goes to my school, the middle school. He's an older guy by a year or two, but I know that guy. So I was rooting for Paul, even though I really didn't know him, but I heard of his name and he did pretty good. He finished the middle of the pack, I guess. And then that next week I saw Paul walking around the school and I said, Hey Paul, I watched you race the other day. You're pretty good. And he's like, Oh, thanks. And I introduced myself to Paul and Paul said, Hey, you want to come over to my house and we can go hang out? And I said, yeah, why not? So that's how I started my relationship, my friendship my childhood friendship with Paul Belial. I went over to Paul's house the next day or so, and Paul lived on this little cul-de-sac off of Prospect Avenue in the city of Orm. I asked Paul, like, where's your dad? I never saw him. And then he said, he runs the restaurant. And Paul said, he runs Belial's restaurant in Garden Grove. And I was like, oh, wow. was always home and he lived in this cul-de-sac next to David Kingsland. You know David Kingsland? I do. We used to drive Paul's mom crazy as we would take our bicycles through the house and his mom would say, where are you going with that bike, Paul? And he'd say, upstairs. And I would follow Paul. And he was like the ringleader. And we'd go up to the second or third floor of his house and we would take the bicycles out the big window onto the roof. And we would ride the bicycles off the roof into the pool. And it was just crazy. Paul was probably one of the nuttiest friends I ever had. And he was one of the funnest friends also. And we looked for fun things to do. And Paul said, hey, Brian, do you want to slide around the cul-de-sac? He lived at the end and they had a turn, a big turn, perfect for Speedway. So we took a lot of sand and we put it there and we had Stingray bicycles and we went really fast and we were sliding. <laughs> Paul and I were having fun over and over again sliding. But after a while, we got tired of it. And I said, Paul, what are we going to do next? And he says, let's start a speedway track. And we're going to start speedway races. We live close to El Medina High School. And so we went ahead and we set up a speedway track at the Fred Kelly Stadium at the track area there. We put the cones there. We made a small speedway track. And it was really beautiful. had races every week we did races and one day the Paul said guess what Brian we have a special visitor and I said who and he said the Speedway rider Sumner McKnight <laughs> I 
And I said, you're kidding me, because I used to watch him race. And I said, how did he come here? And he said, my sister is dating Sumner McKnight. And we asked him, and he's coming to the races. So the next day, whatever, Sumner came, and he was watching me. And I said, I'm going to win. That's Sumner McKnight. And he comes walking over the football field, and he's watching. And I'm like winning, and I'm like, I'm going to win for a Sumner McKnight. And I won. So that was our fun time. We made speedway races at the high school football. Paul and I used to go riding all the time at Saddleback Park in Orange, up in the mountains. Saddleback, rest in peace. And we used to go riding all the time. I had my little mini enduro, Yamaha 60. And Paul had a beautiful gold CZ125. It was gorgeous. And we were riding and I said, hey, Paul, can I take your bike for a spin? I've never ridden a 125 before. He said, all right, Brian. So I said, can I take it over to the Matterhorn? Do you know where the Matterhorn is at Saddleback? It's a big hill climb mountain. I said, can I take the side roads and go to the Matterhorn and then come back? And he said, okay. I got on my first 125cz, it was cool. And I drove the back road up the Mount Wilson. Do you know Mount Wilson? It's cool. I went up the Mount Wilson, it's not that steep, but a little bit, and went all the way to the Matterhorn. And when I got to the Matterhorn, the side road, the bike stalled out. The bike stopped. And I was like, what the heck? I was just a little kid. So I tried kicking the bike and everything. It would not start. So I look up and there's a big hill where I just came from. And then there's another hill going down the side road to the Matterhorn. And I didn't know what to do. But I said, oh yeah, you can push start these bikes. Yeah. So I decided instead of walking this bike up the hill, which I could not do, I was too little. I decided to push start the bike down this very steep side hill. And I went ahead and tried starting it and the bike was going boah, 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 as I was trying to start the bike. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this bike's not starting. So I get to the bottom of the hill and the bike was dead. And I climbed the hill I just came down and the other three or four hills. So I keep going down deeper and deeper into the hole and I'm getting more and more in trouble as time goes on. And it's getting dark. It's sunlight is gone and the sky is starting to turn black and nightfall is coming. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm down here with a broken bike. So what does that young boy do? He tries to keep starting the bike to get out of there. So I went down another hill and it didn't start. And so I'm deeper now in saddleback terrain into the middle of nowhere. I did that a few more times and I was, there was nowhere else to go. I was at the very bottom and I sat there like freaking out. And then there was a rattlesnake that came by me. And that's all there was is a snake and the sun was setting. And I thought I was going to have to sleep all night at the Saddleback Park. Then after a while, I saw like a light come from a distance and it was a dune buggy. It was a search and rescue patrol. They came looking for me. I think Paul went ahead and told them like, hey, my friend's missing. And they went searching for me and they found me deep, deep in Saddleback Mountain. And I threw my bike on the back of that thing. And I went ahead and jumped on and then I went ahead back to the camp. They drove me back. I was met by Paul sitting next to my motorcycle. He was kind of pissed off. 
And I told him, I said, you know, don't get mad at me because I should be mad at you because your bike sucks. I mean, I take your bike out and it dies. Maybe the engine blew up or something. It was dead. Well, that's it. Part one of my experiences with Paul Belial. Rest in peace, Paul. We love you. And we miss you. And we'll see you on the other side. But we had some great times together. Paul was just an amazing friend. He was a good buddy. Like I say, a crazy guy. So we love Paul and we miss him very much. And we're really shocked at the sudden passing of him. And rest in peace, Paul. So thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. This is part one. We're going to do another one next. So hang on and please like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell. <laughs>